So basically you'll notice here, I put some retaining clips. Uh, there's a double bend with a slight bend and that'll allow me once I do my cutout for those beams, I'll be folding three quarter inch tabs and then they will fold it behind so that holds it nice and even. Uh, we got the low voltage electrical because there's LED lights all along the perimeter of each cavity. So I'll uh, show you guys kind of step by step how I do it. So I took all my measurements now. So you'll see here, I started from the edge here. This has a tab that I pre-folded to give me a clean edge as to where the stone will butt to. And I took all my measurements from this section on. Here, there's no room for a tab to go in because uh, it's sitting tight against the flange. So what I'll be doing is I'll be folding it 180 degrees. So I marked out all my measurements here. And same here and then so this is my finish line and then this will be my my tab line here so three quarter inch that this one's going to bend in on a 90 degree because we don't have room to fit into the space on the bottom i'll fold that one tight to give me a straight edge i have a different height so this height here i think is an inch higher than this height here uh, because on this section here we got the extra strapping and the lighting for the led track so there's two different heights so instead of bending, since it's only three quarter inch on the bottom here, I'll do another piece that's 16 inches wide. And then the joint will be so small and so minimal, it won't show underneath there. So here it is, it's all cut out. So you'll see here, I got my 90 degree fold down. I bend this one tight because I don't have room to clip in. And uh, the other half pocket is cut as well. Here I only have, a uh, bend that follows the angle of the uh, roof or the ceiling. I'll be sliding in an, uh, a little piece of uh, double bend uh, wood grain aluminum uh, just to create that finish here. So this is just an L shape that I bent out of aluminum uh, and the LED strip is tucked in in behind. Um, so that uh, just because it's a small L shape, it could uh, bend a little bit. So that's that's the idea. So I'll install that and show you guys another. There's one more thing I like to do when I say I try to use as very little fasteners as possible. I always take my leftover caulking, uh, the tubes that are have been open and have started drying just a little bit. That wouldn't give me a nice finish for a finished bead along the lines here, if you will. And I use that to use it as a glue on the edges. So I only put some on the ridge and that allows the flexibility for contraction and expansion during the uh, different seasons as well. And that's kind of, it kind of sucks the material in place once I set it. So I'll show you guys how uh, I install it and you'll have a better understanding of how it holds up. At the top, at this current time, I'm not doing anything yet because whenever I'll be inserting my uh, fake wood reveal i'll put two-way tape on that so that'll hold in place uh, the top so i'll add another fake trim on top of that to give me another straight line as you can see here in order to try and hide all the screws i put i don't know if you can see it but this screw is right in the joint so when i'll be doing the caulking around that's going to hide that i've also put a few just brad nails here to hold the piece in place just while the caulking dries over the next few days and uh, here too we'll have the extra flashing piece that's going to go up top the wood grain one and then this is all tight as well so this will all prevent anything from falling out until the caulking is fully dried so you can see here where my caulking joint is uh, behind and if you put the the caulking along the edges on the ribs that prevents oil canning as well so that's one of the three pieces that will be going up to do the full beam. So as you can hear, see here, I added a piece of uh, wood grain coil stock that just slid over that lip. That was just removing the two-way tape that's gonna hold it firm in place and then I'll st stick it in place. And then everything is gonna be nice and tight. So I'll be doing the same on this section here. I'll have to bend some because I don't have that one piece. So I'll bend that up. So here's the other piece that I made 
that's a little bit taller. This piece has the J trim, the, the cover slipped on. So as you'll see here, there was never any hole or opening. I put a screw in here to really keep it in line where I wanted it. I put two-way tape on the top here so that it sticks it nice and tight. And that kind of allows me to cheat uh, as to where I want it, as opposed to actually having it, you know, where this piece is all boxed in. I did this afterwards, so uh, the other way would have been to do this first and then do all the soffits first, but I wanted to close everything off uh, for the birds earlier than later, so sooner than later. So that's what I did here. You'll see here I have a little bit of a kink, so I don't have any black soffit screws with me. But I'll put that bang on back straight level and then I'll put a screw in here exactly where I want it so that's going to hold it perfectly straight and then I'll have a cap that's going to go on the end here that's going to have two-way tape and caulking so once everything's going to be dried up and uh, the, the, the end cap's going to be on uh, that'll be nice and ni nice and straight. I put another screw here where the caulking joint's going to go between the two and that'll prevent uh, any movement until uh, everything's caulked in place. You'll see here along the bottom of this piece here, I did a uh, groove and the next piece is going to go, is going to clip on this section here. I'll put a bead of caulking on the tab here. Next piece is going to slide in here, go back down, go underneath. I'll have another bead of caulking along here as well. It'll fold up here with another tab and then the third piece is going to be going up straight from that. So as you'll see here, both sides are cocked, ready for the other piece to slide on and go tight up, go up tight. And like I said, I prefer to just do two caulking beads, two beads of caulking along the edges wherever there's a bend. Because uh, if you put some in the middle, it usually shows the oil can, maybe not on the on the you know top uh, ceiling surface. Uh, but by habit, even when I do it on my fascias as well, I try to keep it along the ridges where there's more rigidity and then the, the middle can flow or can bow a little bit more smoothly as opposed to if it was cocked, you know, some spots would be tight and other spots would flow better. So here's the bottom piece installed. So you'll see here, I put a uh, screw on the fold down tab and the brick's gonna come over top of it. So the, the stone the, will go over that and hide all that. I always wanna put a ridge as much as I can because that gives it that nice straight edge. Even if in the middle, it's bowed a little bit here or a little bit more that way. That doesn't show, but if you have any, anywhere you have an intersection, you want to have a, a fold down, either a fold down tab, which I put in this situation because I had access to, gave me access to screw into the, the house so that it wouldn't fold out so I can set it perfectly level. And the stonework is going to hide that tab once the stonework's completed. If for some reason I the stone was done previously or something else you know wasn't covering that and that was the finish edge I would have folded it up and at least it gives you that nice straight line same here so you can see here I um, added a few brad nails here because once I have my cap my cap's gonna come out uh, an inch and a quarter that's gonna hide all that and this is all clipped in along the edge here so you can see here it's a little bit off uh, but let's be honest when it's uh, you know, we're You know a few tens of feet up in the air. You won't be seeing that from down there um, And then uh, here I did a fold-up tab. I put a screw on the end here again because the caps gonna hide that and I use a three-inch screw just to go into the wood here uh, Just to hold it until all the caulking dries up uh, that I put underneath here and underneath here So just little things to keep everything nice and straight in place while everything uh, dries up and uh, settles. So now we'll be going onto this side. So here you'll see again, we got the retaining clip. So the piece is gonna clip in there. So I'm gonna put a bit of caulking here. On the top, I'm gonna have the two-way tape. You'll see here on this piece, I've already installed that fake trim that's mounted to it. So I assemble it and then I, I crimp it with the hand crimper so that it, it mounts nice and tight. I'll put two-way tape along here and then I'll be clipping it on the bottom here and setting it where I want to as I peel off the the backing uh, tape off the uh, the sticky part so that it sticks in place and then I'll be able to put a few screws on the top 
in the end at the front and then we'll put the cap here and everything's going to be interlocked into one another so it's almost impossible you know for one piece to fly off because everything is locked into it and once all the caulking dries up and everything it's just you can't take it off until unless you rip it off so that's uh, that's the idea you can see here how I did the uh, that retaining clip initially that goes around the beams to keep everything nice and, and straight so you can see exactly how it mounts and how it clips and so it's all about you know creating clips creating bends creating mechanical ways and then you use uh, I like to use the two-way tape and the uh, caulking just to finish securing everything for the long-term reliability of things and uh, once everything is done up you won't see a single screw or a single fastener makes it super nice and clean and it also allows it to have expansion and contraction without going crazy on the oil canning uh, so this one here I think we have almost 16 inches tall we got 12 inches this way and then another 12 inches this way so it would have been almost pretty much impossible to make out of a 24 inch piece once you start adding all the returns and stuff to give it rigidity so we'll have you know this whole section done in three pieces but it'll almost from below it'll look like one single piece uh, and by adding all those extra clips and extra bends it just makes it that much more rigid all right so as you can see here I pulled back the backing of the two-way tape. I started it, made sure it was level. And then I have four inches distance here. And then same here, I set up my zero point here. I got four inches distance here. I'll have to trim the tip to have the same angle as the other side. And then we'll have to do the cap and the finishing wood trim between the two, um, the two be curved beams, the glue lamps. Uh, so right now, like I said, I got my four inches here. This is level. And then I confirmed in the middle that I also have my four inches. So right now we're just good to keep removing the backing. I'll just stick this section up as I go up and then keep removing it. I always do it from both ends just in case sometimes it breaks off the uh, backing. So if you have the other tip, both ends that are started then it makes it easy to just catch the other end whereas if not you'll have to try and go in to, to peel off the 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 backing paper for the two-way tape so as you can see here it clips right into the other one it looks very big from up close like that but you have probably an eighth of an inch gap which uh, you won't see at all from uh, from down below because uh, it's so high so if uh, you want it to be super fancy you could even do a little bit of caulking nice and clean along the edge here uh, but that's not going to show uh, from down below, so I'm not overly concerned. Or you could maybe have done it the other way. So I have done it the same clip this way, done your two sides. And then, I don't know, you would have had to slide the whole sheet in from the end, which might have made a mess with the caulking. So anyway, there's different ways to do those locking features so that they show as least as possible. But at least here we have black and the shadow is going to be black as well and then black. So if it was a white beam, it would probably show more to have a uh, black shadow, uh, but it's all about cheating the eye. So this section done is done here. I'll trim that off on the head. I'll show you guys how I to do the cap and then I'll show the final piece in between here to finish off the black lip at the top here uh, to give that nice fake reveal on that trim too. All right, so we have the end cap here ready to go. You'll notice I put some two-way tape and uh, leftover translucent caulking on the end here. So I'll just slide that in place. And then I made a return lip on the top where I'll put a fake wood trim finish in order to achieve a little bit of a crisp per bend between, you know, in, inside a box. What I like to do is just take the alpha knife with the square and just do a light score on the back so that gives it a weakness and then I fold it using the square as well so that gives it a uh, little bit more of a crisper uh, straight line as opposed to more of a round edge so I'll we'll just slide on just right over top I'll use my two hands because uh, I'll be fighting with it uh, if I do it uh, crooked on the two-way tape so I'll show you a shot after the fact so that's it the two beams are now now all capped so as you'll remember, we did it, we did it in three, one, two, three, plus the cap four pieces. 
and there's no nails showing, no screws. Everything is hidden uh, either behind the caulking or behind the clips. So it's all about, you know, trying to make everything disappear, make everything look perfect from where you'll be looking at it. So we're about halfway now height wise as to how close anyone will ever get. So uh, that's it. So now on to the curved double step fascia. So I'll do a video for that as well.